Hello everyone, my name is Chris with AP Systems and today I will be going over the AP Storage Commissioning process. This is a step-by-step -step instructions on what do you do after you've completed installing and wiring an AP storage system. First off, let's go over a couple of preparation steps before we begin the actual commissioning. One thing you're going to need to do is to download the EMA app. The left side is the QR code for the EMA app for the end user. But on the right side, you're probably most likely going to be downloading the EMA manager app. And this is meant for installers. You will also need to make sure that you have an EMA account. You can get one if you do not have one already by going to usa.apsystems.com, going above to resources, then register. And then you can go in and fill out your information to request for an EMA account. Moreover, you're also going to need to find the ECU ID on the PCS. This can be found by opening up the PCS, the front plate, and then going to the ECUC, which is on the right side of the PCS. Find the barcode over here. And if you can zoom in, this is the number that you will be using to identify the ECU in the PCS. So once again, make sure that you have this number and save it to set it up in the account. And lastly, make sure that you contact me at christopher.ling at apsystems.com to get permission to add AP storage accounts into the EMA. This is the overall process of the commissioning procedure, and it's going to be as follows. First, you'll need to turn on all the breakers and batteries. Then you connect the PCS to the network. This can be done by either Wi-Fi or by connecting to the network via Ethernet. Next, you confirm that the PCS can see the batteries connected to it. Then you set the AP storage system mode. If you have AP systems microinverters, set the PV association. So you have one app managing both PV and storage. And finally, create a user account for the end user to log in to see data. So let's first off by going through the process of turning on the breakers and batteries. This part is relatively straight self-explanatory. You'll need to make sure that you have all of the breakers connecting the main grid and the battery to the PCS. On the example for the AP battery 48 volt 5.76 kilowatt hour battery, this can be done by first switching the safety switch on the bottom side of the battery and then pressing and holding the on and off button on the battery. As soon as you see blue LEDs lighting on the SOC, SOC indicator lights, that means you have turned on the battery successfully. Other DC batteries will have similar procedures to turn it on and activate. Inside of the PCS, make sure that you also have the grid breaker inside of the PCS to the on position, which is up, and to make sure that the ECU button is depressed into the on position. Once power is supplied to the entire system, what will happen is the PCS will start to flash LED indicators. Wait a bit until the LED indicators become the following. System is solid green, grid is solid green, Wi-Fi is flashing, and COM is flashing. Once you see those LED indicators in those states, then that will be a good sign. It takes a bit of time for the PCS to detect the grid voltage and then to energize the grid system. And that will happen when you see grid is solid green. Right, now that this, we're going to connect the PCS to the network. For Ethernet, it's quite self-explanatory. You simply connect the PCS to the router, and that's quite straightforward. But for Wi-Fi, it's a little bit more complicated, so we'll go over the process on how to do that. 
So first, you're going to get the last four digits of the ECU in the PCS that you have found earlier. Then you take your phone or your tablet, connect the internet to the hotspot of the PCS. So you should go to the Wi-Fi settings of your mobile device and then select the network that is titled ECU dash Wi-Fi underscore the last four digits of the PCS. Note that there will be a warning message saying that you will not get internet and that is expected. Make sure that you select the prompt to say that you would like to still stay connected to the network despite you not getting any internet. Now that you have connected to the PCS's hotspot, go to the EMA installer app, make sure that you have the latest version, and then click on local access on the bottom left corner. What should then happen is you should see a view that looks something like this. If you then go to workspace, then go to network settings, you will see this view. So click on WLAN settings. Click on the top slider button to activate the Wi-Fi connectivity, and then select the actual network that you want to connect to. Once you've selected the network, you will need to put in the password. And once you have successfully connected to the network, you should see a check mark next to the Wi-Fi network that you have connected to. Great, so now that you have successfully connected the PCS to the Wi-Fi network, you're going to then confirm that the PCS sees the battery. This can be done by going back to the workspace page, device information, and you will see this information over here. If you look at the row titled battery capacity, if you see a non-zero number, then you have successfully connected the battery to the PCS. In this example here, you see 5.76 kilowatt hours. If you do not see the battery, certain things that you want to double check is the DC battery cables and whether the battery can or RS-485 cable is wired up correctly. Right, now next up, we will set the AP storage system mode. This can be done by going into the workspace page again and clicking system mode. And here are the three options that you can set the AP storage system to be at, either backup, self-consumption, or advanced. Note that if you do not have the CTs installed, only backup power supply will work. If you put the CTs on, then self-consumption and advanced will be available, will, will, be able, will be available functions. Next, let us set the PV association. Note that this is only necessary if you have the AP systems microinverters. This can be done by going into workspace and hitting PV systems association. And once you're here, hit the slider to enable PV systems association. Enter the ECU ID of the ECU R that is managing the microinverters, and then you hit save. Now, the final step is to create the user account so that the end user will be able to access the AP storage system on their phone or on the website. There are two ways to set up user accounts. The first is by going into the EMA website portal. And the other option is to simply use the EMA mobile app to set up the account. Furthermore, there are also two account types. One is if you have PV and storage, Note, this is for AP Systems PV and AP System Storage. If you have another vendor with their inverter solution, you will use the other option. So if you're doing a PV and storage account, what we recommend you do is you simply follow the same process for creating an account for just PV, and then you come back here to add a storage device to the project. The other account type is if you only have storage with AP systems, and you just hit that. All right, so let's take a look at the first option, which is EMA website and setting up PV and storage. So once you have completed the entire PV project storage setup, what you can then do is if you go to the user project, hit user registration, account details, ECU info, and then click on add. Once you're at the add screen, you will see this 
view here. Enter the ECU ID that you have collected from the PCS. This is optional, but you can put an ECU name. But what is most critical is that you have to hit the slider to indicate that this is a storage device. Then you click OK, and you're done. Now let's try looking at the EMA website and if you only have a storage solution. This part is also quite straightforward. You just simply go to the registration button, hit add customer and add storage only user. I won't go into detail in this webinar, but you simply then go through the rest of the pages to enter the information of the system. One of which will be including the ECU ID of the PCS. Now let's take a look at using the EMA mobile app to add these accounts. Let's first take a look at PV and storage. Once again, we're going to assume that you have already created the PV account for the customer. One thing to note is that if you're using the EMA app to set up the accounts, you might be currently connected to the hotspot of the PCS. So what you will need to do is go back into your Wi-Fi manager and switch over to a network that already has Wi-Fi, or you can switch to cellular or something like that. Once you have internet access, log into the EMA manager, manager using your account. Go to the user page and click on the customer that will be getting the AP storage device. Then you click on workspace, and then you click on ECU. In the ECU page, go to the bottom right and press plus and add the ECU. You can enter the ECU ID into this section here. The ECU name is optional. And also make sure to hit storage and set the slider to indicate this is a storage device. Once you pressed OK, then you have successfully added the system to the account. Now let's look at the final option, which is to use the mobile app to add a storage only user. And this is pretty straightforward as well. If you go to the home page to go back out of your customer page, go into workspace and say add storage user. And once you're there, you follow the instructions for the rest of the pages to add the storage user. This will also include you entering in the ECU ID of the storage device. Great, and then from there, part of the process, the end user will receive credentials that they can use to log into the EMA mobile app or the website app to see system information on their AP storage solution. Now, as always, things may not necessarily go smoothly from the get-go. So here are a couple of tips that I would like to share with you on some starting points on how to debug the system. Your first line of defense is the LED indicators on the PCS. They will look something like this. For the system icon, if you see a solid light, that means the system is running. If it is flashing, that means it is currently booting up. And when it is off, it, it means the PCS is off. For the grid icon, solid green means that the grid exists and it has connected. When grid is flashing, that means the grid does exist, but it has not been connected to the system yet. Light off means there is no grid detected. For the backup icon, if it is solid, that means that it is currently backing up loads on the backup service panel. If the light is off, then the backup is not being provided. For energy, Light on means that it's importing from the grid. Light flashing means that it is not it is undergoing zero export. When the light is flashing fast, it means that the grid is exporting. And when the light is off, that means the system is off. For battery, if the light is on, this means the battery is charging. If the light is flashing, this means the battery is discharging. If the light is flashing quickly, that means that you are in a low state of charge, a started state of charge. And if the light is off, there is no battery detected. For the Wi-Fi symbol, if the Wi-Fi is solid, that means it is connected. 
if the light is flashing, this means the Wi-Fi is disconnected. And if the light is off, this means the Wi-Fi functionality is disabled. For the calm or communication button uh, icon, light on means that the battery and internet connection is are both good. If the light is flashing, that means the battery connection is okay, but there's no internet connectivity. If the light is flash, flashing quickly, this means that the internet is connected correctly, but the battery connection is not there. If the light is off, then both the internet and the battery connection are bad. Now for fault, this is the only light where you see is green, or rather it's the only light that is red. When the light is on, that means there is a fault. If the light is flashing, that means there's too much power that's being drawn on backup. And if the light is off, then there's no fault. Another common issue that can occur with installations is if the battery communication cable was not set up correctly. So just as a reference, the image on the left side shows the colors and the pins of the RJ45 connector. And make sure that you have those pins connected correctly. The middle table indicates the pins and the port names that are on the PCS. So on the PCS, pins four and five are for CAN, and seven and eight are for RS485. Make sure that you take a look at the battery manual to make sure that the pins are being used correctly. The example picture on the right side shows what AP battery does in terms of pin connections. If you notice that for pin seven and eight is going to be the RS485 connection, and that needs to go to pins seven and eight on the PCS as well. For parallelizing the batteries, make sure that you also connect pins four and five between both of the batteries. Another common issue can also be the directions and locations of the CTs. On the PCS side, make sure that you have the CTs connected to the right connectors. And on the AC wiring side, make sure that the PVCT is connected onto all of the solar coming into the system and make sure that the direction it is pointing from the PCS towards the PVs. For the consumption CTs, make sure that you are connected in between the main load center and the utility meter. And make sure that the arrows are pointing from the utility meter towards the main load center. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. This is how to go over the commissioning process for the AP storage solution.